this is a story all about how my life got turned flip upside down. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'm going to tell you how YouTube's content ID system is unfair. Did you really think about that before you did it? <laughs> this has been planning for a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> it didn't sound any less nerdy than it was planned to be. Yeah. I could have rapped it. Man. I could have done much smoother. I've been, I've been reciting rap lyrics randomly and trying to upscale them to better thesaurus usage. Like, a bit that, was, that just, that just yeah. tumbled apart, didn't it, then? Yeah. yeah. I like usage. large posteriors and I'm incapable of deception. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Um, yeah, YouTube content ID. I've had m- <laughs> I've had many adventures with YouTube content ID. Um, I've had recently people on Twitter thanking me for the videos I've done talking about it, which is quite nice. Um, I've had one. Yeah, well, I've only done like twelve videos. I've had lots, but my um, YouTube presence is pretty bad. To give a rundown of my content ID history, um, when they first started doing this a few years ago, I was working for Electronic Arts, and I got content ID'd on a video of skate. E sports. That was okay. It's they they didn't do anything to me there. They just said, "Oh, we're just going to leave it there and have adverts on." I'm like, "Okay, cool, whatever." Um, but since I've been doing the the Mellow Gaming channel, um, Square Enix content ID the video cutscene from the intro of Final Fantasy XII and refused to remove it. So don't play Square Enix games on the channel anymore. Nintendo are notoriously troublesome with this. Um, but then I come across Konami, and I did a Castlevania playthrough the other day, Symphony of the Night, five and a half hours long playthrough of the entire game. And I've been content ID'd on video by Konami. Like, it's automatic, it's all automated, and four hits from Sony Music Entertainment. Right, which Sony Music have refused to release them, because apparently, even though the music's turned down, the game sound effects going over it, and I'm talking over it, and they're like three hours in that they've picked up the things. They think that apparently people are going to be watching this video to listen to the music. Um, I'm waiting to see if Konami released the video, because I've got a feeling Konami basically chuck all their music into Sony's content ID system, so they can content ID anyone playing the games, and then say, it's not us, we don't claim on the games, you can play the games if you want. Oh, but the music thing, that's not our thing, that's the someone else handling it. But the thing is, that's really annoying with the whole system is it's a complete mess. I've had another YouTuber called T-Bone Pearson claiming my videos were made by him. I had Nerdist do that to me. Yeah, Nerdist. But yours is a big organisation. This is one YouTuber. Like, how did Nerdist think that my adventure... I did a series of YouTube videos called The Legend of Magicles, which were me playing Dragon Age Inquisition on, on, uh, on Twitch. And I just put it over to YouTube. I didn't do much commentary or anything like that. And I thought, like, oh, okay, EA are probably going to flag this. And then the Nerdist flagged the first yeah. video. They were like, this is Was us. it on a... What did, they flag, what did they flag it on? Like a video? Yeah, they flagged yeah. it. They said at, like, 2 minutes 83, there was... Was it one of the cutscenes? Video and audio. No, it was, there was, had already been several cutscenes. Mm. They just put video and audio owned by... Owned yeah, because that's the thing. They're, they're literally... Who they are Nerdist? Do... They're the website, right? Yeah. Do they just sell a lot of people? They're all list tools, list calls and videos and all this sort of stuff in it. Pricks. But it's like... The thing is, is that when it comes to Let's Plays, you can't do that on video content because, like, take a game like Runner 2 that I got content ID'd on by a company called Gretek, who Bitrip run... 2? Yeah, Bitrip oh. Runner 2, yeah. Gretek run a uh, uh, sort of esports gaming channel called GOM. Yeah. Um, like, you take a game like Runner 2, let's say you take the video of that, one person playing that well is going to look pretty similar to someone else because the entire game is set in time to music. Yeah. So every jump is going to be at the exact same second... So as long as you're hitting each thing. Yeah. So they're using the video content on that, and it's just going to match to anyone who plays those levels of Bitrip Runner. Especially to that degree. Yeah. Like, it's always going to be based on but the But it's, degree it's not even... The, the system's not intricate enough to pick up the differences. Because the one with T-Bone Pearson that came up, that's because he played Sonic Racing Transformed. Yeah. He's had it on loads of Nintendo ones as well. He's got it on an automated system, because that's how it's all run. But, so he just automatically like goes and says, yeah. all right, you prick, give but him my video. All you need to do is someone... Just needs to turn a corner at the same time he turned it on his video. And he'd kick off. And it'll automatically match it. Oh, you've got Katamari. Yeah. Well, of course I've got Katamari. I've got multiple Katamaris. They're all good. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, this T-Bone Pearson guy, he's a tool. Sorry about that. He vanished for a while from yeah. YouTube and then came back with a £700 camera he had bought showing off that. So I wonder if he's getting that from all the ad revenue of people who seem to think that they don't know how to dispute content ID claims. I'm just going to dispute everything now. Because it comes yeah. from EA. It's just Always dispute, because there's nothing they can do. You're allowed to dispute every content ID claim. Well, it's all right. It's, it's a yeah. Because this, this is the thing with their system that's really broken, though. For a start, it's automated, so no one's actually checking the videos before they claim that you've stolen the ID. The moment they content claim it, they're getting the ad revenue from your video. 
Yeah. Which is fantastic. So if your video does really well, suddenly they're making money. If yeah. they do that to loads of tiny little YouTubers that haven't got be... the backing of yeah, the big companies. Well, the duckets. Yeah. And you'll be able to buy a seven hundred pound camera like T Bone Pearson did. Dicks. Um on top of that What's he gonna use it to? When you dispute it, you... the person who um friggin' decides whether or not you have broken content ID is the person accusing you of it. Think about that for a second. Can you think of a system where you were judged by your accuser? Um American courts of law. <laughs> well, the court doesn't take you to court. The lawyers take you to court. That's true. That's true. Some the police accuse um, you of something. <laughs> well, see, the problem. I, I think like the probably the biggest problem is the amount of money it would cost because uh, YouTube. I'm, I'm guessing it's a massive organization. They're hands off YouTube. They let the it's all the companies themselves. They all have. Oh, okay. It. So, but but that's why it's automated as fuck. This is this is in defense of their current process. This isn't yeah. me defending it as a person. But they can't saying, employ people to manually sit there checking everything. Yeah, It'd be ridiculous. That's, that's the problem because there's hours and hours of content on YouTube. So, But if someone doesn't respond to your content dispute, does it then go away? After 30 days, it goes back, but they still get all the advertising revenue for that 30 days. Okay, so yeah. oh, okay, so I see, I see where the issue is. So you can see where this is going to yeah. be abused like crazy. Cricks. Yeah. Because the thing Cunts. is... if they, I love being able to swear. <laughs> the way this should be handled to me is have the automated system, but don't block, don't content ID someone's system and take away their ad revenue straight I would away. I have the automated system but reduce it down to seven days. When possibly they, 14. Yeah. And, and it automates it. When it hits something it's in the people who run that have yeah. their own employees. Because you can't expect YouTube to check every video. No, but no, 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 no. it's perfectly reasonable to expect Economy to have people checking just Economy videos that it's come up with. Yeah. Um, Gretek coming up and checking their ones. Those ones with their game esports things. I sent a message to them saying don't match on video. You've got commentary on your videos match on the audio for the commentary because that's unique that is actually something you own you don't own those games yeah and it is only the publishers who have a right to own them and the only reason we're allowed to get away with let's plays on youtube is because the publishers let you do it mm. and most publishers agree it's a good thing oddly all the japanese publishers seem to have problems with it well i think in japan it's not considered free advertising like in the uk when someone clicks on your 15 minute video of you playing mm. dragon age and calling an axe the fucker mm. that, that's giving you ad revenue but in japan obviously they're in uh, quite stylized, and it's this isn't this isn't a negative thing because I think that this is something that's that's stringently managed by the government over this. So it's good, but you're always there's always an influx of advertising. There's mm. there's places where you can see adverts wherever you go. They've got more of those video billboards than we have anywhere in the world. They have constant streams of advertising, and I think it is stringently managed. So when you get someone on YouTube and they're going, "Oh, come here, you goblin cunt," it's not something that they want to have. So I think that like, but the, they all talk about it as though you're stealing their game, well, and so you're stopping someone wanting to play. Like you know, the reason the experience there was no... is to the individual. So yeah, if I was it's transformative, to... everyone plays it differently. But but the problem is that if I was to see the same cutscene as twenty other people at the beginning of a two-hour campaign, and half an hour of that is those cuts are those cutscenes that I've already seen. They just stop making games that have half an hour cutscenes. Alright, now get started for yeah. it's not to everyone's liking, but I liked it. Had an hour and a half long cutscene at one point. Maybe to pee. You're gonna pee. I'm gonna pee during the podcast. This is the first time this has happened. I'm gonna pee. I'll be too. I'm gonna have to just entertain everyone myself. Yeah, right. So Matt's one off. But basically, what I'm getting the point at, the point I'm getting to here is that you do need to rethink how content ID systems are managed. They need to stop automatically blocking people and taking the revenue away from them. It's all very well and good if you're someone like me who gets hardly any views, but if you're a big name YouTuber, that's troublesome blocking them from making a living. But I'm done now. YouTube's content ID system, zero. And I've just got to wait for Matt to come back. Come back, Matt. You done? Yeah, see, I peed. Well done.